Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be covering testing in JavaScript which is one of the most important skills you can know as a developer. It's something a lot of people don't teach or focus on, but if you know testing it's going to set you apart from every other developer that doesn't know testing and give you that extra leg up when you're applying for jobs. So in today's video I'm going to show you the very basics of how to get started with testing in JavaScript using Jest. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects quicker and better. And if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. And to get started in this video, I have something a little bit different than usual. I have a few files already created, and these are very simple JavaScript files. All they do is define a very simple function and then export that function for us. In our case, we have a function that adds two numbers. We have a function that subtracts two numbers, and we have a function that duplicates an array. And if you aren't familiar with this spread operator syntax, I have an entire video that covers it, links in the cards and the description down below if you're interested. But essentially, all that this is doing is duplicating the array and creating a brand new array from the current array that we're given. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're going to be talking about testing and how to test in JavaScript. And the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to use the library called Jest, which is an incredibly popular and well-built testing library inside of JavaScript. So in order to start this, all we need to do is run npm init pash dash y to it. That way it'll initialize with all the default values. And this gives us our starting point package.json. Next, we need to install. So we're gonna npm dash dash save dev. And we want to install Jest. This is going to be our testing library. And the reason we're saving it as a development dependency is because we only use this testing library in development to make sure everything runs. Now that that is done downloading, we can come in here where we have our test script and we can just change this by typing in Jest. And essentially now when we run npm test, it's going to actually run Jest and run all of our tests. But of course right now we don't have any tests, so this is just going to fail. So to get started creating your very first test, all you need to do is create a new file Give it the exact same name as the file you want to test. In our case, we'll test sum, and then you just say .test, and then .js. So essentially, you just take the same file name, add .test to the end of it, and make sure the .js stays at the very end. Now, inside of this file, all we need to do is import our sum function, because as you remember here, we're exporting a function called sum. So we're going to import that function by just saying in here, we want to require .slash sum. This is going to import this sum function. And then we can actually write a test for this. So what we want to do is to test to make sure our sum function works. So essentially, we want to test that when we give it two parameters, for example, one plus two, we want to test to make sure that that is equal to three. And in order to write a test with Jest, we use this function called test. And the very first parameter to this test function is just a string of what the test is doing. So in our case, we can just say that it properly adds two numbers. You just write what you want to test inside of that string because this will actually show up inside of the console when we run this test. The second thing is going to be a function and this function is what gets called to run your test. So we have a test which is going to properly add two numbers and then it calls this function and inside this function we need to make sure that our expected result happens. And in order to do that normally in JavaScript you maybe would put like an if you could say if sum of one and two is equal to three then you want to run some code inside of here. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, you want to throw some kind of error maybe. And that would be how you would do this with normal JavaScript, but this is kind of bulky and hard to use. So with Jest, they actually have functions built in that allow you to do this testing. And those test functions are called expect, just like that. So what we're saying is we expect something to equal something else. So we are expecting sum of one and two and we want this to be three. So we could just say two B and we pass in three. Now, if we save that and run this, you should see that our tests are going to run and they are going to pass. As you can see, it's running this test right now and you can see it's ran all of our tests and they're passed. Let's just expand this up so we can see it easier. And you can see that it ran properly, adds two numbers in two milliseconds and it passed and it says everything is working fine and it took about two seconds to run everything. Let's bring that back down. And I'm going to go into this syntax a little bit more because this looks really confusing, I guarantee. So let's break this out so it's a little bit easier to read and know exactly what's going on. The first section we have is expect. And expect takes anything 
that we want, and we're saying we expect whatever is inside of this section to do something related to the other section. And there's a lot of functions we can use, for example, to be, to equal, not to be, to be null, to be undefined, and so on. There's quite a lot of different matchers that you could use in this case. But for our simple example, all we're doing is checking that 1 plus 2 is the same as 3, and in our case that passed and ran correctly. Now let's go over to our clone array function here, and what we want to do is we want to test to make sure our array is the same. We just want to make sure that we created a duplicate array that is exactly the same. So let's create that new file, clone array.test.js, and inside of here, again, we need to import our clone array function. So we can just do that, require, oops, require dot slash clone array. And then inside of here, all we need to do is do that test. We want to say it properly, clones array. And in here, we can just run that. We want to say expect clone array. And we want to create an array first. So we're just going to say const array is going to be equal to just an array with some random numbers in it. So we want to expect this is going to be our array. And we're actually going to get a failure when we do this. So let's just run this test real quick. And this is actually the difference between to be and to equal. So once we get this, we're going to scroll up so we can see our error. And as you can see right here, it says what did it do? expect received to be expected object is equality. If it should pass with deep equality, replace to be with to strict equal. And it says expected one, two, three. And it says received serializes to the same string. So what this is kind of saying is it's saying these objects look to be exactly the same. The value seems to be the same, but they're actually different places in memory. Because remember I said clone array, this is actually creating a brand new array with all of the same values. So now we have two arrays that are both referencing, they both have the same value, but they're referenced by different memory addresses. And this sounds a little bit confusing, but I have an entire video on pass by value and pass by reference that I break this down in. So you can check that out linked in the cards and the description below. But essentially what we need to use is something called to equal instead. Now, if we run our test, this is actually going to pass because our arrays both have the same structure. They're both one, two, three. And as you can see, they both passed. They just don't have the same memory address. So we can use a second test where we can say to, we want this to be not to be array. And we can run that. And the reason we're testing this is we want to make sure our clone array is actually making a copy and that it's not just the exact same array. And as you can see, that passed. So we made sure our array is the same array, one, two, three. And we also made sure that it created a clone. Instead of just returning the exact same array, it created a clone of that array. A little bit confusing, but as I mentioned, you can check out that video and it'll break down pass by reference and pass by value for you really easily. Now, one last thing we need to do is let's create a test for our subtract.test.js. And inside of here, I'm just going to copy our sum test because it's going to be very similar. We want to make sure we import our subtract method and we want to do that this is properly subtracting two numbers. And of course, we need this to be negative one because one minus two is negative one. Let's run that. And of course, we should see here that all of our tests are going to pass as soon as this finishes. And as you can see, we're getting an error. And that's just because this needs to be subtract instead of sum. And now when we run this test, we should get everything to pass again, which is going to be perfect. And just a second, there we go, everything passed. But it's kind of hard to tell what parts of our code are tested. Right now, it just says that our test passed. But how do we know which functions got tested, which lines got tested? And this is actually really easy to do. We just need to pass in the dash dash coverage property to our just test. Now, if we save this and run our test again, it's actually going to make note of every single line that gets ran, every single function that gets ran, and make sure our code is tested 100%. And as you can see here, it says that all of our files have all the statements, branches, functions, and lines tested 100%. And it even generates up here an HTML file, index.html. If we open this up, I bring this over, you can see that it actually has all of our code being tested 100%. But if for some reason, instead of our sum, we had a separate function, let's just say we had a function called helper. And this function is just going to do something, let's just say it logs out helper. Now if we run our test, we don't actually test this function. Nowhere in our test are we running this helper function ever. So you're going to see down here, when this finishes, that we have some of our code not being tested. And we can just open this back up so we can actually see. And as you can see, we get generated out that only 66% of our statements are tested, 50% of our functions. And if we click on it, you can see in red is all the sections that are not being tested, 
which makes it really easy to know if we're actually testing everything that we want to test. Now before I dive any further, I want to step back a little bit and talk about testing as a whole, why it's important, and how you can actually go about doing it in an easy manner. Because I've shown you how to actually write your test for your functions by using the text test keyword and the expect, as well as to be, to equal, to other things, depending on what you want to test. And that's all great, but how do you know you're writing good test, and why do you even bother writing test? Well, let's say for example, we want to change our sum.js, and we're coming in here, we're making a bunch of changes, we're writing all this new code, and somewhere along the lines, we accidentally change this b to a. So now our code is saying return a plus a. Obviously, a plus a is not going to be what we want. So now when we run our test again, we're going to get a failure. So this is a way for us to be able to change our code and know that everything is working properly if our test passed, or if in this case our test fail, we know somewhere along the lines we broke our sum function because our, ta our test for properly adding two numbers is now failing. So what we do is we're going to go back, look at our sum function and realize, oh, whoops, we changed our a to a b or our b to an a. Let's change it back to a b, run our test. And this is just a really great way to verify your program does what you want it to do. And in all of these tests, I'm doing what's called unit testing. And unit testing is when you test the smallest unit of your code. In our case, this is just a single function. We want to test only one single thing at a time. For example, I could write a fancy big test that could test sum, it could test clone array, and it could test subtract all at once and do all this crazy testing, but that would be a lot harder to write and it wouldn't really tell you that much. If that test breaks, is your problem in sum? Is it in clone array? Is it in subtract? Is it even somewhere else? With unit test, what you're doing is you're breaking your code down into really, really small components, essentially small units, and you're testing these individual units. So now you know if your test for a single unit failed, that that single unit is broken, and you know exactly where to go to fix it. Also, it allows you to write really small tests because you're only testing a small part of your code, so you only need to make sure the inputs and outputs for that very small section of code are what you would expect. So it makes testing really easy because your tests are just super simple like this. Obviously, in your use case, your test might be slightly more complex than just one plus two, but it's still going to be incredibly simple. Another really important thing about tests is that they give you confidence. Let's say our application is hundreds of thousands and millions of lines of code long, and we want to make some really large change to our code. We want to refactor it so it does something slightly differently that it didn't do before, and it's doing a lot of different changes, we're touching a lot of different files, and it's hard to manually test your application. Maybe it's a huge website with thousands of web pages, and manually testing all of that is impossible. It'll take hundreds of hours to manually test, so you can't manually test after every change. But you have your test suite with all of these different individual tests, and all you need to do is just run it, npm test, and it'll tell you if anything inside of your code is broken. Now, obviously, it's hard to make your test 100% cover every single type of edge case that you could have, but the goal is to make your test as bulletproof as possible. So almost every single thing that can happen in your application will be tested. So you know that if your test suite passes, then you know that your application is good to roll out to production and you don't have to do lengthy manual testing. You only need to do a small amount of manual testing just to verify for yourself that everything works. But other than that, you can just push it up to production as long as your test actually pass. So there is a really quick overview of unit testing with Jest. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. I would love to make more testing related videos, so if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.